Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. And that rather um, stop start, impossible to play. Yeah. Uh, skip through gain texture and gain structure. Yes. Very nice. Which is part of what we're talking about today. Yeah. We're going to be talking about how to choose an overdrive pedal. I think a really interesting thing that's happened over the last uh, number of years, you know, the, the pedal market is huge there are literally thousands of effects pedals thousands of just just overdrives i don't know how you do it if you haven't had 10 years of buying and selling overdrives i don't if you arrived in the market and you had to choose one it's really tough where on earth do you start exactly exactly so i thought okay well this is a good place to start because there are a number of factors that you need to consider when you're choosing an overdrive pedal um namely the sort of guitar you're playing, the sort of amps you're playing, the sort of sounds you're going for. Have you heard something that you want to try and yep. emulate or that's inspiring you to go in a certain direction? Um, so I thought we'd have a look at the the you know the the varieties of you know the, the EQ. You know the, the, we're going mid humped. We're going full frequency. Uh, are we going? To enter dirty amps or do a clean amplifier, we're using humbuckers, we're using single cores or strats. Yeah, so let's say, uh, you know, why is this important? Number one, your overdrive and your gain structure of your sound, even for people who don't use overdrive, is the most important part of your guitar sound, right? So the gain Absolutely. structure, whether you play clean or whether you play heavily overdriven, the way that basic gain makeup is made in your guitar sound is the most important thing about your sound. Yeah, so, so even though I use clean amplifiers. I have an overdrive pedal on 95, 98% of the time. And I'll use the volume pedal with that, with the overdrive pedal, because that's, you know, the interaction with that gain stage is everything. So of course it's the it's the core of your tone, and yep. then of course it's the core of um, things like boosting for solos, if you play solos. It is literally number one stop for yeah. guitar tone isn't it yeah, absolutely so everybody even if you play clean like if we go if we rewind all the way to rock and roll guys in the 50s mm -hmm. or hank marvin mm -hmm. or some people who you might think of as clean that sound is driving a bit yeah a little bit and a, an absolutely brutally clean guitar sound is quite an unusual thing which yeah. is which is really just to make the point that most of us use overdrive most of the time sure and sure. when once you get as deep down the well as dan and i are <laughs> it's a oh boy boy i must have 50 overdrive pedals yeah i'm i'm probably 40. No, yeah i'm probably knocking on well more but <laughs> more more um <laughs> so how do you take let's 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 take a let's say there are 500 overdrive pedals on on the market as a conservative estimate mm -hmm. how do you take that 500 and go right here's the 10 i think i might want to start listening to yeah yeah and that's really what we're going to cover today um and i've written some notes down to try okay, to try and keep us on yeah, track yeah, because this um, track could go awry quite easily <laughs> Which and it's also to say, you know, what we're not going to do today is tell you which of the fifty-eight thousand tube screamer clones to buy. No. So it's not how to choose a tube screamer clone or a blues breaker clone or a fuzz clone. It's not, you know, does JHS make a better tube screamer than Wampler than of Ibanez? Course. Than it's not about that. It's about zooming out a little bit from that and going, how do I get, yeah, to the to the area in which I want to look. So Daniel, yes, what is the most important question? about choosing an overdrive pedal? 
Uh, I'll give so, you a clue. <laughs> right, so <laughs> what do I want an overdrive pedal for? What do I want it to do? Yeah. Why do you want it? Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. That's the... It, you might you might spend your, your life looking at forums and reading stuff and deciding you want this and that and the other. But if you haven't actually answered that basic question, mm. then... You're just going to be running around in circles. Or, or at least it's going to be not a focused search. It's going to, you know... More yeah. difficult to get to that final answer. And we had a brief discussion, didn't we? And we, we, did. we came up with four things, four of the most common reasons you might want an overdrive pedal. Yes. And they are thusly. One, you might want an overdrive pedal for your always-on core sound. Yes. So this is my sound, mm -hmm. so we'll look at that. Mm -hmm. Two, you might want it as a solo boost. Yes. Which is probably the most common use of an overdrive pedal for most people. Yeah, the sound, sound, there. sound, Bang. on, more. louder. Yep, more loud, more loud. Um, number three, a VST, a very specific tone. I like it. <laughs> so, if you want to sound like Jimi Hendrix, or if you want to sound like David Gilmour, or whoever, you might want it for a very specific sound. And we'll get into that a tiny bit with a massive word of warning. Yes. <laughs> um, or you might want an all-round do-it-all miracle maker that can literally do anything yeah. to take whatever amp it is you use and make it sound like something else. So with this smorgasbord mm -hmm. of awesome overdrives, mm -hmm. we're hopefully going to give you something to go away with and help yeah. a bit. Yeah, great. Great. Okay. So if we let's start with the always-on overdrive. So the amps we're using today, we've got the... The Fender Hot Rod Deluxe V4, V3? Three. V3. And we also have the Victory Kraken. Yeah. This is the new one? Uh, it's the it's VX the Kraken in, in the compact series, so it's okay. the one that's been out for a few years. We've chosen these amps because this is getting on for the most popular, clean pedal platform on stages everywhere, mm -hmm. loads of people own an amp in the world, mm -hmm. super common amp and for, for good reason. Sounds wonderful. And the VX is really about a gain thing because as we'll discuss, and as we have discussed in many videos, a pedal into a clean amp and a pedal into a gainy amp is two totally different. Wholly different things. Totally different things. So we're going to try and c compare and contrast what happens when you run them into a clean amp and into a... Dirty amp. Yep. Should we have a listen to the amps, Daniel? Yes, yes, it's very good. Okay, so this is the Kraken. Nice. Uh, that's quite, so that's set up like you would think a. Uh, some sort of vintagey type Marshall somewhere between a really uh, cranking plexi and moving on from that maybe into master volume territory. Yeah, because it's not crazy amounts of gain. No. It's just crunching. Yeah. Yeah. And with humbuckers, it's kind of a little bit, just a tiny bit more. Gee, that's a great sounding guitar. Um, lots of people like to run their amps like that, mm -hmm. a bit gainy up the front. Dan, mm -hmm. I tend to go for a cleaner amp, such as this. Why would you want a clean amp like that as opposed to a dirty amp? 
Well, why don't we move to question one, Daniel? Yeah. Well, which be- is you're always on core tone. Yeah. So, so you're using a pedal to get to your always on core tone. Yeah. I know plenty of people who their always on core tone is that. would be exactly the yep. sound that's coming out of that kraken. Sure. Um. So. Yeah, if that's in fact that's a really important point. If you've got the amp that is your always on core tone, yes. you don't need a pedal to get there. There you go. Exactly. Is that what you were pushing Ex- me towards? Yeah, because <laughs> the thing is, I can go from a clean amplifier and I can get to that. Yeah. But I can't go the other way. Yeah. You know what I mean? So with that sort of sound, I can get the lovely clean things, and I do a lot of clean stuff and big chords and things. But I can't really do that with that sound. As good as that sound is, okay, it's great. You know so what I mean? So let's say then, let's say that you've uh, you've you've got a Blues Junior or a Hot Rod Deluxe or some amp that you've had for years, or that's the amp that you've ended up with. You 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 would like a modern, slightly more modern Gainier amp, mm-hmm. but you don't have the cash for it. So you're going to get a pedal to right. try and get you great. closer to that. Yep. Is there a, is there a pedal on here mm-hmm. that can make this Hot Rod Deluxe? get closer to that for our always on gainy sound. Yeah, one thing that I think the gainier set up amplifiers does have something in the, in the mid range. And like with this amplifier, it has, there's a really specific mid range. And then there's almost this sub yeah. bass that you don't get by just adding bottom end. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, but let's, okay, let's try it with the sweet tea. So this is uh, like the Angry Charlie. Angry Charlie version three. Right. And I had to get the thing here. And I always get it wrong with JHS pedals, which is which. Uh, it's a Moonshine version two on this side, okay. Which is their Tube Screamery type one, right? And the Angry Charlie version three on that side. Cool. So it's, we'll come to that a yeah, bit yeah, later. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's give that a go then. Okay. <laughs> There's a top end bite that that thing's got. That's yeah, really that's got massive honky mid range compared to this as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So okay, we could literally spend all day doing that. Um, and I think one of the key questions in buying an overdrive pedal is, can it make it sound like a Gainey amp? You depends could, on the Gainey amp. Depends on the Gainey amp. Yeah. You could go through many, 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 many. Absolutely. Pedals to get there. So if we just rewind a little bit from there and mm-hmm. talk about your always on core tone. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted, back to the Hot Rod Deluxe for a second, mm-hmm. if you've got a clean amp and you want to pedal for your always on core tone, mm-hmm. what's important about that? Um, well, it's important to understand what, you're, what you want your always on core tone to be. Like, So for me, I'd, I have nowhere near that amount of gain yeah. in my core tone. Um, it's dynamic, so it cleans up uh, depending on how heavy I hit the strings. So if I was going for my core tone, uh, let's I'm going to try the Timmy. Yep. Okay. So I would be. This one's clipping, mm-hmm. I think, and um, these work the opposite way around. Yeah. Had you already worked that out? Yeah. yeah, yeah.
So that's for, for a core tone, that's as much gain as I need. How does that, um, so one thing that a lot of people like to do is to use the volume control on the guitar to just back off the gain a bit and make it a little quieter. How does that work with that pedal? Beautifully. Great. So as the basis of an always on core tone, what you've got there straight off the guitar is full on overdrive if you want it. I'd probably have a bit more treble, a bit less bass. Yep. Even with humbuckers, it, it cleans up reasonably well. Yeah. Great. Good, good, good Re core sound. Absolutely. So if that's, you know, if, if what you use all the time is not crazy gain, yep. you know, but something that will give you a bit of an edge. Um, if you're playing songs, for example, if you're doing a, a, a cover gig and you're playing just, just chords, the great thing about a sound like that is that you can do, you can do your... Then by just n nudging it up on the volume, you've got the verse, you've got the chorus, it's all there yeah. by just the interaction between the guitar and the pedal. So, you know, for those sort of sing along type things where you want to give that bit more of a lift in the chorus, a really great option. Now, the Timmy uh, is a classic overdrive pedal um, made by Paul Cochran. Um, there are lots of Timmy clones, but this is the original and, you know, still up there with one of the best sounding. Yeah, and it's it's popular because it has a fairly, a reasonably even frequency mm -hmm. range. So yep. it's not massively focused in any particular part of like for example a tube screen which we'll come on to in a minute mm -hmm. so it has a full range in terms of eq you can change the bass and treble and it has a wide range of gain and it has a wide range of volume headroom on tap so let i think one important point to make right now is that great timmy's going to give me all of that yes let's hear it into the victory yeah 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 so if you compare what you've just heard mm -hmm. i.e quite a lot of dynamic response here you go dan Here's what's happened. Here's the victory. It gives a little bit more edge and a little bit more bite. Yeah. But you don't get that dynamic range that you do with that into a clean it, I thought it cleaned off quite nicely it with, does. with the volume control. That surprised me how much clean you could get there by coming right down. And it might be that if you're, if you, the way you approach the guitar is you don't need a huge range of volume. Mm -hmm. What you need is essentially a good crunchy rhythm and then thicker for leads because the uh, PA person is going to turn it up for you yeah, in yeah, the front. Yeah, if you don't need a, a crazy amount of um, difference in volume in your playing, you, really you just want thicker and thicker, then running a gainier amp and a pedal into it can be a great way. However, if you like that dynamic range of clean amp, then it gets louder mm -hmm. when you step a pedal on it. Using a gainier amp doesn't really work in sure. that respect. Yeah, yeah. And that probably brings us to the next part of the story so yes you can choose any overdrive you like to get your core sound but just be aware that oh the timmy sounds great mm. it does but it sounds radically different into different amplifiers that exactly right so you need to think about that yeah about 
stacking lots of gain on more gain just gives you more gain and more compression and more distortion. Yep. Stacking gain onto a clean amp will give you volume, a bit more gain. It's shades of grey, is it not? Yeah, yeah. And, but also the guitar. So the difference yeah. between the humbuckers and the single coils is stark. You yeah. know? So if, if you're hearing a, you know, like... A, like a sound um, that uh, the guy's using a Strat and a low gain overdrive into a clean amplifier, and you're thinking, okay, if I get that pedal into my PV Rage with my, you yeah, know, yeah, my humbucker yeah. thing, <laughs> and they're going, why is it not doing the same thing? It's that because you've got, it's all these different gain stages. So, you know, and we talk about this a lot, but these these are all gain stages that interact with the guitar and the gain stages go into the amplifier. So it's just part of that chain. It's part of that equation. Totally. Uh, yeah. It's very windy today, by the way. So if you hear lots of blowing and blustering and things banging outside, that's what that is. It's uh, Hurricane Beatrice. Yeah, is on the way. All right, that leads really nicely into the next question, which is um, what if you want to use a pedal for a solo boost? And we'll do that in two ways. One is we'll talk about the solo boost into the clean amplifier, which is mm -hmm. easy. That's really easy. Mm -hmm. What's less easy is let's say you do love that amp distortion and you run your amp super crunchy. What what are your options then? Sure. So if we start with a clean amp, yep. this is easy, isn't this it? Very easy. Very so easy. you can, Daniel will explain. Okay. So because the clean amp has so much headroom, once I've got a, my core sound, okay, so I've got the Timmy here and I'm really happy with this. <laughs> That is killer. So as far as boosting that is concerned, I have two options. I can boost into the front of that sound, which is gonna give me more uh, compression, but it's depending on how I voice that boost, yep. it will cut. But if I want a volume lift, what I need to do is boost after that so if you imagine that um this is the sound and i need more of that so that needs to go into basically a more pedal right so uh let's use uh the let's use i tell you what let's use the clon yep for this all right so this is a this is a clon clone um anyone familiar with the, the fabled clon center will know it's the, the most fabled overdrive pedal of all time ever. Yep. Um, don't need to give you a clone history. Look it up on the web if you don't know about the clone. This is a clone of a clone, um, relatively affordable, and it's one of the best clones we've ever heard. Absolutely. And it does, clone does two things really brilliantly well. Clone type circuits, should we say, do two things brilliantly well. Um, one is they work into pretty much any amp. Yeah. Including. Different gain stages. Gain amps. amps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because they do a very specific thing. One is they drop a little bit of bottom end off. Two, they add in a very... Um, I'm going to stop talking about it and we'll just listen to it. Dan. Okay. How about that? So, again, th th so this clone is now after the Timmy. Okay. Right, so great example there. Consummate lesson in gain stacking there. There you go, there you go. So the Timmy, I've got that sound. It's it's great. Having the, t having the clone after it, and it's shaping the tone a little bit. It's focusing it a little bit more, but it's lifting. The and Timmy has, the, sorry, the, the, the clone has loads of We should of call it the Ryra. Sorry, the Ryra. Ryra the clone. The Ryra we the call clone. It really. But that, that type pedal has got loads of headroom. Yeah. So I'm hitting that quite hard, 
but it's it has so much headroom. It's taking all of that and it's just lifting. I'm just going to accentuate the effect of that a little bit by turning the Timmy down. Yep. Giving you a bit more gain. So just try that a sec. Okay. And now when you turn the rider on, I'll do it part of the way through. Okay. Now let's just compare that exact thing if we do exactly the same thing into an amp that's already gained. Yep. So here's our gain sound. Probably the best eggs. example we've ever done yeah. of the difference in running overdrive pedals into clean and dirty amps. Yeah. There is no more headroom available in the front of that dirty amp. It's already, there's just nothing left. No. So you hit it with a pedal and all it does is get thicker and fatter, which is a cool thing. Yeah, yeah. But there's no solo boost available no. in that. So, so. Sorry, you it's were okay. about to yeah, say? Yeah, no, 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 I was going to say, so what's the answer? Exactly. So what's the answer to that? You have it, uh, that dirty amp, it's a sound I love, and that's what I want to use, but I'll, I, I need something, I've got to have a solo boost, I've got to cut through. You've got two options. First option is, going into the, running into the front, is that I'm going to shape my sound going into the front of that amplifier. And I can do it with something like a treble booster, or even a tube screamer. Now what these pedals do, is so the Timmy, for example, is this full frequency overdrive, and working into the front of the clean amplifier, it's beautiful. It's you know it sounds great, it's dynamic, but as you heard that going into the gainy amplifier, there's there's no more headroom, so it just it doesn't work. There's nothing to lift. It just got thicker, didn't it? it? Just got thicker, which is cool, but which is very cool. But what we're going to do now is have a look at the Java Boost by Keeley, and we're going to uh, it's called a, uh, a treble boost, a treble booster circuit. And what it does is it accentuates the upper mids and top end. And when you hear that into a gainy amplifier, now actually, let's hear it into the into the clean <laughs> amplifier to start with, only so that you get an idea of the frequency this is putting out. Yeah. And I'm going to be really careful with this because the output on these is, is very high. Yeah. And the sound, when you hear it clean, is not lovely. So this is just the amp. Somebody's going to think that's a cool sound out there, and it might be useful turned down a bit. But here in the room, it is extremely unpleasant. Yeah, it's that that ah, there's a, that that upper mid range frequency, and it's like oh my word. So you know how to choose an overdrive pedal. You, you, you think oh, what I need is a treble booster, and you plug it into your oh, well, clean, clean Fender amp, and you're like, this is broken. I need to send it back. Yep. However. However. Bye. 
just such a brilliant sound and kind of what treble boosters were invented for, right? Exactly. You know, if you think back to the 60s when it first came out, the amps were overdriving in those days, whether it was a Marshall or a Vox or mm. whatever other mm -hmm. amp they might be using. And the treble booster used very famously by Jimmy Page, Rory Gallagher. Tony Iommi. Um, yeah, of course. Yeah, into his May. Really only works into an overdriving amp, doesn't it? Yeah, well, certainly at that sound, uh, at, at that stage, yes. Um, you know, so when you've got your amp cranked like that, what it's doing is uh, it has so much gain, but it's so focused in those frequencies and it pushes those frequencies through, those frequencies overdrive, and you know, so you have this level of touch sensitivity. Um, so sometimes if you're looking for an overdrive pedal for your gain amplifier, in actual fact, what you might be looking for is a treble booster. Is a treble booster. Yeah, um, yeah. And that is, um, quite often we'll get the question, you know, how do I boost a gain amp? Yeah. Well, if you want to boost it for overdrive in the front end, that's how you do it. Uh, many overdrive pedals, they can work, Tube Screamer can work, but actually a treble booster is... Is the fun part, isn't yeah. it, into a gainy amp. But I will do one last thing. Yeah. I'm going to put the Timmy on, and so you can hear the treble booster into the Timmy. Okay, nice. Because uh, if you... This is a, a thing I've done for years. I, I love this sound. Uh, did it with my hot cake into my AC30 for a long time, because I, I couldn't get the AC30 cranked. Like this treble booster into a cranked AC30 is something to behold. But the, the volume by the time that AC30 is cranked <laughs> yeah. is just crazy. <laughs> so I'd use the hot cake and get the gain that way. And then I put that treble booster into it and it was awesome. But if we do the same thing with the Timmy. So if you, we go back to amp the, the clean sound. Yeah. And then we get the Timmy going. This is the sound of the amplifier. Isn't that cool? Brilliant. Yeah. Gain stacking. Yeah. But it's such a specific sound. Yeah. So you know, again, uh, the the troll booster can be great into into you know, if you have a uh, a pedal like a core tone pedal that breaks up naturally, it, that's a great option. A good way of boosting now, in the front. Let's have a look at the tube screamer because this is also, as far as boosting is concerned, and we talk about tube screamer quite a lot uh, as a booster pedal because um, when we talk about the the treble booster that really shapes those and focuses those upper mids. The tube screamer sort of moves that that shape down a little bit, but it's a famous um, pedal used for like really heavy tones. Yeah, yeah. And just to shape those mids and push it a bit. So if we go from, we have a listen to the sound of the the tube screamer on its own. <laughs> Very kind of nasally mid focused, isn't it? That's yeah. that is the sound. That of, is of, the sound of the tube screamer. Of the tube screamer. Um, we're going to be looking at this in, uh, obviously in a little bit further de detail in a bit, but that's the sound of the tube screamer into the clean amp. Now let's have a listen to this exactly the oh. set up exactly the same into the dirty amplifier. <laughs> Very commonly used, isn't it? In, Very, in, into higher right. gain amplifiers for that job. Yeah. So if you're um, 
you know, I think we, we always associate the sound of a tube screamer, or well, many of us do, certainly with the blues, the Stevie Ray thing, which we'll have a look at in a bit. But it might be that if you've got a, a high gain amplifier, you, you know, you don't need a high gain pedal to boost that. What you need is something that focuses that sound yeah. and, and punches that in the front. So we have looked at how we shape the frequencies and boost into the front. But the other thing we need to look at is is if we have that sound and we just want to overall boost. You want more, yeah. Options? That's the that's the question. It's like, look, it's all very well for you guys running clean amps. I really, really like dirty amps. Yeah. But what I really need is for it to be louder. Yeah. In 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 my solo. One very popular way of doing that. Yes. Yeah, so we have a clean boost pedal in the effects loop of the dirty amplifier. Now. This what? doesn't work the same for all Dirty Amps effects loop because it depends on the effects loop. All effects loops are not created equal, but it's certainly an option. Yeah, the biggest thing to know about that is if you have an amplifier with what's called a post-phase inverter master volume, right? It's to do with where the master volume is positioned in the mm -hmm. circuit. If your amp has one of those and the Victory... What was it just a minute ago? Uh, Sheriff series has that, so it has a post phase inverter master volume. If you try and do this with that, it doesn't work as effectively because all you're doing is overdriving the phase inverter. Yeah, you're yeah. hitting it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um this amp doesn't have a post phase inverter master volume. Right. Nor does a hot rod deluxe. So anything you put in the effects loop is hitting is going straight to the power amp section. Will give you a boost. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't work for all amps, but it does work for, shall we say, most amps. So you need to check that. Okay, so we have the sound that we want. Our dirty sound. With dirty sound, and we just want to boost that a little bit more. Okay, so, go ye. Actually, you go ye, because it's easy for me to get to the EP boost. Okay. So we have the EP boost set up in the loop of the victory. Yeah. Okay. And you want, so this is, I've got my sound. You've got your sound. I like it. You it's, like it. It, it sounds uh, like this. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something different to play other than the mindless power chords I've been playing so far. Let's do it. There you go. Nothing that we put in the front of that amplifier was giving it anything like no. that lift in volume. It no. was giving it a bit of a shape, yes, which you might perceive as a lift in volume because yep. it just tightens it up and puts it in your face more. Because you can do that gain. with EQ. Yep. Um, but in terms of actual thump lift, nothing was doing it. So that is an option. Yes. Yeah, so again, if you're thinking of, well, I need more for my high gain amplifier, I, I, I want um, another overdrive, maybe you don't. Maybe what you need is a clean boost in the effects loop, if that's what you, what yeah. you really want. And the other way to do that is, does does the EP start at unity gain, or is it there can is you a dip turn switch, it down? There's a dip switch inside that you can that you can change to turn it down. At the moment, it's, it starts at like a 10 dB boost. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing you can do is, if you've got a pedal with a master volume on it, and oh, I like this trick. You like the sound of your amp absolutely completely gained out. You can use the pedal to turn it down. Yeah, that's a great P trick. Some people call that an under boost or whatever. Underdrive. Yeah, uh, you basically just set the pedal, the, the pedal that's in the loop of your amp, you set that at a lower level than the amp itself. Mm. And when you switch the pedal on, it gets quieter. So mm -hmm. it's the other way around. You might have it, you might have the pedal on, i.e., quieter for all your rhythm stuff. And then when it comes time to play the solo, you turn the pedal off, yep. which kind of opens your amp up completely and mm -hmm. off you go. Mm -hmm. So that's the other way to use a, a boost in the loop. Sure. Now, now one other quick thing about using boost in the front. So we looked at the Tube Screamer, we looked at the Java Boost, and we looked at the Clon for boosting in the clean amplifier. There are that type circuit. So the Tumnus, a uh, pedal by Wampler, Again, it's that clon type thing, but what it does give you is much greater control over the EQ. Yeah, this is the Tumnus Deluxe. So there is a mini pedal Tumnus, 
which is a great sounding pedal. Lots of people use it for a boost either before or after another overdrive pedal or just as an always on pedal. But this one adds to that functionality by having separate EQ control. Right, so, so why would you want separate EQ control in your boost? Because let's say that you've got your clean tone. So um, Nick, if you'd be so kind. Okay. It's almost nearly in tune, Dan. Oh, we're getting there. Okay, now, let's say that uh, I have the, the tube screamer on. Yep. And that's my rhythm sound, and I really like it. Okay. So we're, we're back into the non gaining amplifier. We're back into the non gaining amplifier. Yep. So with the tube screamer on. Yep. Now. That's working in the track, it's really great. And what I want to do is boost that. I really like the way that the clon attacks, I like the way that the clon feels, but the that mid kick that the clon has is going to be too much in this situation. What I can do is just adjust, you know, pull down the mids attach uh, a touch um, and get a bit more bite in the treble so that what I'm not doing is stacking mids on mids. Yeah, so one of the things about when, you know, choosing these overdrives and boost pedals is, you know, we can talk about EQ, but but they all feel a certain way. And I know that, like, the Klon that you've been using for years, it's not just about where those the EQ is. Otherwise, you just use an EQ pedal. Yeah. It's about the way that the pedal reacts as a boost pedal. Yes. So if that's the sound that I like and I want to boost that, or maybe, uh, you know, having the the... It, what we can do, actually, let's do it both, both ways. We'll click the Ryra on as a boost, and you'll hear that shape, right? Um, and arguably, it might be too much mids. Are we that'll... talking before or after at this point? So at this point, we'll be talking after. So the, the Ryra, uh, we're using it as a solo boost. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So there's a tube screamer. That's the sound we like. We want to boost that. If we use the, the Ryra as a boost... <laughs> righteous it's, it's, it's going to come out of any mix that yeah it's exactly good. it's great but if if what i want is that is the feel and the attack of the of the that style circuit yeah but without so much mids yeah using something like the tumless Deluxe, which gives me more control over the EQ. So let's let's have a listen to that. So there's much more flexibility there with the in with the just the overall EQ. That Massively so. Yeah, yeah. Get, get, just do some extremes of EQ. Yeah. Just okay. just to uh, um, like take all the bass out, for example. Sure. Just to just to hammer that point home. Okay. <laughs> Still feels like a clon. It still has the attack of that circuit, you know. But with that really flexible EQ, it yeah. means that you can, 
it, it, it's just that you you can use it in a you know depending on whether you want to boost into the dirty amplifier or the the clean you know as a solo boost after your overdrive pedals that sort of stuff is really really powerful and the radical shaping you can get from absolutely that EQ, yep. which you know we didn't change the volume on the pedal at all all we did was change the eq but the audibility of it changed absolutely massive yeah 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 okay um we've gone quite deep on solo boosting there yes we yeah, talked yeah. about clean amps and dirty amps with clean amps it's relatively easy because mm -hmm. they've got enough headroom when you step on a pedal the whole thing gets louder mm -hmm. in a dirty amp not so much because the front of the amp compresses and if you step on a pedal it just gets squashier yep. so you could use the effects loop there we go or you know lest we forget the thing that probably lots of people are screaming at the screen now you could just turn your guitar down which is one way of, <laughs> of yes. regulating your mega gainy amp. So I just want to give a shout out to you guys who are screaming at the screen. But just yeah. use your volume control. You don't need all these pedals. Uh, that's definitely one way to do it. Yeah, if, it is a way to do it. If that's your uh, if that's your bag. Yep. I mean, ideally, not ideally, probably you do all of the above. Sure. You'd have all the options. Yeah. Right. Which is. But also, you know, using the volume control is is just as applicable with. Uh, your core tone into your clean amplifier. Yeah, you know that's it, it's a skill that you develop. Um, but yeah, you hear a lot of guys with the really gaining amplifiers. It's a, you know again a great way to do it. Yeah. So why do I want an overdrive pedal? Number one, uh, as my always on sound. Number two, to try and get some sort of solo boosting going on. Yep. Number three, let's move on. Number three might be a VST. Yes, a very, a very specific, specific tone. tone. <laughs> um, we'll just we'll try a couple of examples here. We probably don't need to spend hours on it. Um, the reason the reason this is really important to include is that I still see, you know, this pedal sounds like this guy or this pedal. It it, it sounds, um, you know, it, it's. Dave Gilmore in a box, this pedal, you know, stuff is like, man, it's really important to understand that the pedal is part of the circuit. Yeah. All right. And arguably the amplifier that you use and the guitar that you're using are, uh, will give you more shaping yeah. of that. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you look at, um, you know, people going for, so, so I've included a couple of, uh, a power boost and a big muff to hammer this point home. Me using my Telecaster into either of these two amplifiers using those pedals will get me nowhere near David Gilmour, right? It might. You might be surprised. It might give me. Sh it might give me a shade of it, but I'm not going to be yeah. um, Daniel Steinhardt live at Pompeii, you know, with that sort of rig. It's just not going to work. Um, <laughs> uh, but what I want to do before I go there, yeah, if you can grab blue. Yep, for a second, um, okay. because with the with the tube screamer, I think I know what you're going to ask me. So I'm just going to start on this guitar, so we've got the contrast. Okay, all right, good yeah. shot, good yeah, shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Stevie Ray thing, that Texas blues sound that he you know sort of encompassed and personified. Well, it was him, wasn't it? It was, it was his his sound, and it stood alone. Right there, we go. And that's something that you sort of... I was massively into it as a, as a younger person. Right. So I, I, I worked out after a long period of spending lots of money that I would never sound anything like Stevie Ray Vaughan. Okay, but you sound so much more yeah. like him than so many, than <laughs> nearly anyone I've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. But I think to, to, to hammer your point home, it's, it's like you can chase this and you can say this pedal is going to give me this sound, but it, it won't really because... We're going to get into very deep water there with the tone being in the fingers. Okay. Tone is not in the fingers. Have a listen to my fingers. There you go. I'll put them up by the mic so you can really hear them. Tone is not in the fingers. It's in the interaction of a human with the gear. And uh, anyway, let's let's move on. So let's let's talk about Stevie Ray just for a second. And so soon as we're talking about a very specific tone, yep. Stevie Ray's thing was a Strat, uh, a Tube Screamer, and a Fender amp. Right. Not necessarily this Fender amp, but a Fender amp. So mm -hmm. let's say I don't have a Strat, I've got this guitar. Here's what the Fender amp sounds like.
So no one's ever going to accuse you sounding like Stevie Ray. Doesn't sound much like Stevie Ray, does it? No. So, if we introduce the, the important thing, mm -hmm. Fender Strat, and in this case, tuned to E flat, right? Oh, nice. So a big part of what happens with the Strat when you turn it to E flat, here we are into the, just straight into the amp. Already. It's already close. Already. It's closer. It's not loud enough. Of course. The amp's too middly. Yeah. So like a more mid scoopy fender that's overdriving a bit more would get you closer. But the the really interesting thing about that was as soon as you got you put that E flat guitar on, even just clean, it was like, oh, okay, there it is. With the tube screamer added though, yeah. It was Yeah, you couldn't you can't it's very difficult to do that particular version of SRV's tone without a tube screamer. Yeah, 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 so yeah for sure. The, the point is, isn't it, if you want to get that very specific tone, you may well need one. Yeah. But it's not going to give you the tone in isolation. Do, uh, I, can I, I just want to... Too much mid. Yeah, but like loads of mid. Yeah, way too much mid. But anyway, I was interested in that. Okay, so yeah, a very specific tone. But the other thing is, you play yeah. that stuff, and you've, you know, you lived that stuff for years. And if you're after a really specific tone like that, yes, you're not going to get that sound without that pedal. Doesn't right? work in E standard. There you go. All that stuff. Yeah. Can sound really great, actually, into a clean Marshall. Right. That can work. Okay. So, so many preconceptions going on with about what you need to get the sound. Mm. And like you're, like you're intimating, you know, a great proportion of it is in here and how this connects with that. But without that, without an 808 style tube screamer, mm -hmm. it's quite difficult sure. to get that, to get that sound. Exactly. So that, that's part of it. But there are so many other things yeah, going on. Yeah. And the most important thing, though, because, I mean, I could, with your Strat and everything, I'm not going to sound anything like that because I don't yeah. I don't have that Stevie Ray thing. Yeah. And so if, you know, I just, I, I see so much stuff online about this is the tube screamer you need to get his tone. No, it's this one, it's this one. <laughs> you know, it's... There's so many other things perhaps yeah, you yeah, should be looking yeah, at yeah. if that's what you really want to get. Yeah. And so, you know, for example, and I've got the color driver and the big muff here. So again, into the um, into the, the fender. Uh, now the big muff. Now, find a bit of delay on that. It, 
it's by no means instant Gilmore. No. But what it is... It's very cool. It's a great sound. Fuzzies are some of the most specific of VSTs, aren't they? Very Absolutely. specific tones. So Absolutely. We were talking briefly about Billy Corgan and his kind of very mid-focused, yep. you know... Ultra-aggressive. High-output humbucker. Yeah, yep. um, I guess it's Big Muffy uses, is it? Something like that? Yeah, well, he some uses... Kind of Big Muffy uses the Fender Blender right. as well. Um, that has that octave in it. Uh, yeah. So he's he's, you know... But it's again, it's a really specific tone. Yeah. Uh, but chasing after that without, um, you know, the guitars that he uses, and and he he also used bass amps and things when he was recording. You right. know, to match just the hugeness. Yeah. Um, and you, you're not going to get uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan <laughs> out of a out of a big muff into a gainy amp with a humbucker guitar, right? exactly no no <laughs> you know that's a really interesting example so so if listening to the sound of the big muffin just how big it is trying to put that sound into the front of a gainy amplifier everything just collapses yeah, yeah you know yeah. so you know which is why um he uh, david gilmore used high watts because Massive headroom. just that that crazy headroom Still had character. It wasn't like plugging into a PA. Yeah. It still had character, but it just worked with that sound. And then I'd need a Strat and, you know, my, uh, get the Echo Baby out and the, yeah. all that sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That Big Muff is part of it. And again, with the color driver as well, um, if we just have a quick listen to, to that, uh, and this is as far as it, like a transistor based overdrive pedal, it's amazing. Now we hear that into the front of the dirty amplifier. Not going to change anything. Please don't turn the volume up to maximum on the guitar. Okay. This is going to be the power, the color driver set exactly the same way into the clean amp. Okay. Okay. So I'll turn very, very gently. <laughs> same pedal. Yeah. Same settings. Yeah. Different amp. Exactly. No better example than that. Yeah, yeah. By the way, if you've never tried a color driver. <laughs> <laughs> Man. So I'll just turn that master volume down again. So this is into a clean Fender amp, right? Here you go, Dan. Philly boots.
same pedal, not going to change anything on the amp whatsoever. Give me a bit of clean. He's gone. Gone. Um, brings us quite nicely into our final thing four, doesn't it? Mm. So, yeah, we could sit here trying to sound like Stevie Ray Vaughan and Billy Corgan and David Gilmore all day, all day long, and that's not really... It's not a, our thing, is it? No. Because no matter how hard you try, you're never really going to sound like them. It's much more interesting to understand the gain structure and the way pedals interact so you can get to something close to what you want. I'll just say, what's amazing about that is so many people listening to you play go, oh my God, you sound just like Stevie Ray. And when I hear you do that stuff, you sound more like him than almost anyone I've ever heard. <laughs> but that's still something that you've you've come to on your own going, you know what, I'm never going to really no, no, no. sound like No, no, no. But him. then you listen to Matt Schofield do it or Philip Sace do it or anyone who can really, really do it. Uh, and they sound even more like him. And they even they, say, say they don't same sound thing. anything like yeah, him. Yeah. So yeah. it's... I, for me personally, it's a hiding to nothing. But anyway, the color driver, I think, brings us into our last category. So we've done number one, you're always on, always on core tone. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, solo boost. Yes. Number three, a very specific tone trying to sound like somebody. Yes. Number four, and finally, that one pedal that you can get that does everything. Yeah. I am amazed. This thing, right, was designed in the what, late 60s. It's one, of the, one of the, if not the first overdrive pedal, the in it, first in, circuit. In its original form is the Solar Sound Power Boost, right? It was called the Overdriver in the US. But um, this is a modern remake which has a master volume which makes it a little bit more versatile. Mm. Blimey O'Reilly, we oh, went from man. super high headroom clean boost all the way through to crazy, almost gated. Yep gritty overdrive didn't yep. we what, yep. a, what a great pedal that is however yep. it does when it gets into the overdrive it is quite vintagey that's right and yeah. it's very yeah, much yeah. a transistory overdrive sound doesn't not, have that smooth thing it's it's it you know yeah. you really hear the edges of that drive not for everyone yeah, so yeah. the final thing is why, why do you want an overdrive pedal finally 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 as a kind of do it all fixer pedal and we've got two of those on the board today um, the sweet tea mm-hmm because it's a dual overdrive pedal that has a bunch of modes. And also, I think the Tumnus Deluxe falls into this definitely, definitely. category as well, because it can sculpt. Yeah. So, And to me, what this comes down to, which we alluded before, is finding... Uh, it's that circuit that you connect with, right? So, I've loved the Angry Charlie circuit, you know, since it came out remember, back in the old room. Yeah, the Angry out, Charlie is the... roughly based on a cranked marshal isn't it yeah yeah it's that type governor type circuit isn't it the um yeah yeah i think it's supposed to it's supposed to be in the cranked marshal ballpark sure um but <clears throat> what what this version does because we've got the, the the massive eq range which means depending on you know, the reason we might need a, a a pedal that covers a, a huge amount of ground is we might not know what amplifier we're going to be plugged into yeah at the, at the gig we're going to 
Um, so we need to be able to shape that tone. So, yeah, for example, if uh, we go to the, the Sweet Team, we have it set up like this at the moment, uh, into the into the Fender. It's killer. So, Dan, using your knowledge of how to tweak uh, overdrive pedals, yes. find me in that pedal a fairly clean, boosty, mid, mid boosty, clean sound. Okay, am I allowed to use the other side? Yep. Okay, so again, the, the, the Sweet T, there are two sides. We've got the treble booster, not treble booster, the, the, uh, the tube screamer type. Moonshine. Moon, the moonshine <laughs> side, which is based on a tube screamer but also has this clean blend in so if we Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Got me a nice, clean, boosty. Give me a bit more um, compression. Okay. And a bit more gain. Similar sort of sound, but I just want more compression and more gain. Okay. More again? Not much wrong with that. I don't think we need to gild that lily anymore. <laughs> okay. Now, now, give me, uh, give me. I'm gonna pl play a Fender Stratocaster. Give me a high gain '80s metal sound. Okay. It depends on whose eighties <laughs> high gain metal sound. You're I'm, I'm going about. full on um, uh, cliche. Okay. And now give me um, a more modern high gain heavy rock okay. sound. Yep. Thank you. 
how much more we need to say about a do-it-all pedal, are we? No. There's no. plenty of them out there, dual-sided. Um, essential things to look for are, or it's good things to look for, are some kind of clipping mm -hmm. option. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to know more about clipping, that's quite a deep-dive subject, but yep. it basically means how much compression and headroom you've got. Uh, compression versus headroom. Um, and a three-band EQ does make a massive amount of difference. Yep. I think we should. We didn't really just, hear much more of the Tumnus Deluxe. I'll just there, show you the gain range of the Tumnus Deluxe and show you some EQ stuff. Do you as want well. to play? Let you play for a bit. Okay. All right. Um, the, and, and so what you're talking about the clipping options as well. So the Tumnus Deluxe, you've got the normal and the hot as well. So yeah, uh, um, yeah, a massive, massive range of of uh, okay. clipping stuff. And the cool thing about that is it still has the feel of that K-type circuit, that attack. K-type. The K-type. <laughs> Clon type. Um, yeah. Massively, massively versatile. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, one potential downside of massively, massively versatile overdrive pedals, the Timmy is another one that's massively versatile, mm -hmm. um, is that if you just want that... An 808 tube screamer, then just, just get, that. get that. Yep, absolutely. But if you do want more, and of course, we're galloping towards the conclusion, which is, how do you buy an overdrive pedal? You can't have one. <laughs> there you go. Right? There you, you go. You start with one. You start with one. And then, instead of buying eight tube screamers, which is what I did for the first <laughs> 20 years... <laughs> understand which general groups these things fall into yeah get one of each yeah stack them up have all the overdrive tones you want in beautiful. the world beautiful start with one go to two when it feels right if you end up at 20 you do have something approaching a problem but that's okay you're a it's a wonderful here. problem to have <laughs> come then, on in the water's fine yeah then you can start obsessing about whether you know, this tube screamer is better than that tube screamer is better than there that tube go. screamer. Eight hours online, <laughs> figuring out which tube screamer to buy. Do you know what? Stick with one tube screamer and add a blues breaker type, a fuzz, and a some kind of boost. Yeah. And happy days, isn't Brilliant. it? Brilliant. Right, there you go, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that. That was, that was, a, that was a, a whole heap of fun. Yeah, I can just read the comments now. How to buy an overdrive pedal, an hour... <laughs> of deep information <laughs> and they tell me I, I need 20 yeah that's the conclusion um yes yeah, so a massive thank you to everyone that's gone to that pedalshowstore.com and purchased a t-shirt or a hat or strings or um, coasters uh, journals pencils all things to help you and us yes yes thank you very much uh, also, massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Uh, couldn't do it without your help, guys. We so appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, also, to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe. Uh, which is Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. Very good. Uh, with our friends over in the US of A. Would be Riff City Guitar at various locations. 
and of course Australia. Uh, Pedal Empire of Brisbane, Queensland, thank you very much guys, please go and check them out online and see what they have to offer, some of which may be on this pedal board. There you go. Thank you so much guys, have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you soon. Bye! Bye.